And we are live. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, it's John here, joined by um, our most gracious, not host exactly, that's me, but um, let's say benefactor, uh, Travis Pangburn. Today we are talking about yeah, yeah. the death of God. Um, not literally, maybe we'll go literally, it might get weird, more the uh, metaphorical death of God. Um, and I expect more people to start trickling in. Um, before we start, anybody here early, remember to uh, join the Discord and uh, follow the channel, subscribe, like, alert, all that good stuff, because free and fair discourse is in short supply, especially in the internet, especially now, so your support is much appreciated. Um, By the you, way, uh, John, yeah. it still says Dead Free will exist, I believe, on the stream. Oh, does it really? Oh, I'm sorry. That I'll fix that. I can edit that, right? Or should I stop yeah, yeah. and go again? Yeah, you can. Okay. One what was that, Andy? <laughs> Tra hmm? Travis just admitted that he believes. <laughs> you believe in... I think you, Travis admits he believes in free will. Uh, <laughs> stop the presses. Which is, that, which is enough to tarnish his reputation as a... That's one of the biggest... That's one of the biggest straw man uh, I receive all the time. Um... Uh, well, how can you go through life believing in nothing? <laughs> I believe in a lot of things. Oh, so the truth, the truth comes out. We are, Travis, Travis yeah. Bainbird has been revealed. He believes in things. Michaela, journalist. you have to rip him apart. I'm not good enough I atheist, believe, but I I'm believe sure. I'm wearing this new t-shirt that says I'm a bit of a player. In reference to chess. Do you believe that that's Avengers objectively? I believe Michaela is in the room with us right now. I There's, believe that. But it can't hey, say man. anything outside of your human perspective, Travis. You can't believe this. It's Travis, impossible. your shirt is rainbow and it says I am gay on it. I don't know how you deluded yourself into thinking it says anything else. Well, I, I, I don't see what you're seeing and maybe you're seeing things... Um, that uh, aren't maybe he's there. seeing things correctly and the rest of us are wrong. Yeah, that's yeah, maybe you're so oh, we're going solipsism now. This wasn't the topic, it's very possible. <laughs> sorry, yeah, sorry, man. we can get to uh, about uh, should we tax rich people or something? Yes, okay, <laughs> why is anybody there's only so much, right? And as you gain more, your ability to continue to gain it grows exponentially. So okay, like, so then we're talking. But that's about a natural law, God. though. That's true for like gravity and stuff. Pareto distribution, baby. It's not as simple as an economic system. Unfortunately, I didn't say it was simple. I only just started explaining. No, I'm I just, I just, yeah, I jumped out of your throat a bit there. And how easy it is for me to derail it proves that God is in fact dead. And I might have killed them. Uh, I don't think you were alive. <laughs> um, <laughs> no one cares. If well, a they had either. more knowledge of my existence, so I'm sure I drove them to suicide. Okay. That's a little fucked up. Well, okay. on that gracious note, um, it's lovely to have you, Andy, regular, and Michaela, uh, recent uh, returning regular, so I'm glad to have you both. Hey, um, I'm back sporadically. Huh? Whenever Travis sends me a link, well, you know, like, specifically, I, it, well, I'm you like, know, okay, maybe I'll like this one. Well, you know, if I say regular enough, maybe my wish will come true and it will be true. That I'm manifesting here. I don't know if that's in like, the new atheist belief system, but I believe in manifestation. If I just say it enough, eventually it'll happen. So uh, okay. drop by more often. Um, anyway, we're talking about the death of God, not the literal death of God. Um, he did not commit suicide because he knew Andy was going to exist. We're talking about Nietzsche's uh, famous and often misunderstood declaration that God is dead and humanity killed him. This happened right around the Enlightenment when science and reason began to triumph and human beings started to drift away from superstition and from organized religion. And when that happened... Uh, Didn't Lawrence Krauss spend like three hours breaking this down to what's his name with the annoying voice? What? Right? Like, Lawrence, Lawrence and... Fucking run you nuts, shitty apologist X, William Lane Craig. Oh, they already had this discussion. Why are we talking about it? Because we're the experts. Because I like hearing <laughs> the sound of my own voice ours. more than I like hearing the sound of William Lane Craig's. That's why. 
Do you need another reason? Do you dare question William me? William Craig has the worst voice in the history of vocal cords, okay? Oh, I have nothing <laughs> against him. He's nice. He's doing his best. Um. Well, atheists are stupid because they don't believe in God. That's that is a fair. The, I mean, that I, is a, that yeah. is in fact an argument. If I if I it in the dumbest way. Atheists are stupid. <laughs> like, the worst voice. So if he had a better voice, maybe I could listen to his arguments better. But he does make points. I, I will say that for William Lake friend, he makes arguments. Yeah, make points. Are you good points? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say okay, that. Travis is. Travis well, what is and the good? audience's patience, I'm sure, is starting to wear thin. So, John, you could continue okay. with your uh, opening statement oh, or whatever. God. The problem, the oh, problem sorry. is that usually I'm good at moderating, but you guys are so likable, you make me want to go wild as well. So, <laughs> it's a bit of an issue. Anyway, uh, when Nietzsche declared the death of God, he, while he was an anti-theist, he was also somewhat concerned about the ramifications for human beings and for society as a result of the loss of organized religion. And now we're about, what, a hundred years out from when he said that, probably a little bit more. Um, and we have to deal with the consequences. So in the announcement you saw, I basically ask, do you guys agree with Nietzsche that God is metaphorically dead? Do you think this is a good thing or do you think this is a bad thing? Were his prophecies, if you know them, do you think they came to pass? And what are the larger ramifications on the world, on society, and on morality in the aftermath of a dead god? Um, I can start out. I think that um, it's very complicated, but it was, in fact, a very big deal. And some good things happened, like all of our scientific um, discoveries, but a lot of bad things happened as well. Nietzsche predicted um, experiments with socialism, as he called it, but he didn't have the word communism that would kill millions. He, he um, predicted politics becoming nothing more than spiritual warfare, which I believe has happened and continues to happen. I think uh, this is a Peterson point that the religious instinct has descended into politics in a sort of way. And he predicted that we'd see wars like the Earth had never seen before. And we got World War II, World War II, and the Cold War after his announcement of the death of God. So, to me, it seems like Nietzsche is a bit of a prophet. But I'm sure that there's, um, I'm sure that there's uh, a little bit of tension there. So I want to open up the room to all my um, lovely friends. What do you guys think about the death of God, Michaela? I'm going to go with you first because you have a, um, because you have a face cam, which means you are. A first class citizen and everyone else is a second class citizen. I don't make the rules. It's just, how, it's just the yeah, natural I'm order. Not a first class citizen. Everyone turn you your cameras right on. That's what John's trying to say. Let's go. Yeah, now. then you'll have to ask us all at the same time. Yeah, and also it means you'll have to stand behind your statement, so it'll be fun. Alphabetical order. If we turn our cameras I've been on, here the longest, so I get to go first. <laughs> Also, I can't turn my I was here before Travis. In this Discord. I'm not forcing. I'm not forcing anything. All I'm saying is, if you don't turn your cameras on, I might discriminate against you completely fairly. But I might. I might. No I might pressure. do it. It might be okay. harsh, but it'll right. be fair. So, so just know that. All right. Okay. I might track your IP address and physically. It's not your turn, Andy. Andy, not your turn. Okay, Michaela, go right ahead. Sorry. Okay. There's God dead. Fucking no. No. Can you ever, I mean, we're humans, and it seems like humans have the necessity to create gods. So it, it seems as though as long as we're around, there'll always be some of us, a subset of us, that feel this need to create a deity. And are, are they slowing us down? I mean, I guess it depends. It depends. Like, if we look at an issue like stem cell research, um, the doctrine associated with Islam... Uh, and stem cells, like, when the soul enters the fetus, that's not exactly detrimental to, like, the research that would be beneficial. But if you look at the Christian doctrine, that w that is detrimental and has proven to be detrimental to stem cell research. So I think that different gods are going to create different uh, levels of different amounts of problems, different kinds of problems, uh, problems that we can't right at the current moment foresee. Um, no, I know I don't think God is dead. I don't think, I don't know necessarily if the world would be a better place without any religions. Um, 
it's just it's hard to say. Um, I think that religion does a lot of harm, and the good that it does can certainly be done in other ways. All right. But I don't think we've been around long enough to really know, because for for as long as we have history, for most of that time, people have been religious. So we don't really have anything against which to compare it. Um, so, do I think I'm dead? No. Do I think he ever will be? No. Would it be helpful if he was? Maybe insufficient data. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Travis, do you want to be a part of this discussion? Because you're next in line with the face cam. Um, you could also- uh, I'll pass for now. I'll, I'll do some chatting at the end. Uh, I'm just sharing your stream here like madness, John. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I love gathering more disciples into my cult. Um, so, I mean, Michaela, I tend to agree that in the idea that religion isn't dead completely, I 100% agree, like, obviously. Like, a vast majority of people are religious. Um, I think that God, that maybe a more accurate saying would say God has been taken down a peg, I guess, because back in Nietzsche's day and before that, like, it was universal to be religious. And now being not religious is kind of a normal thing for a lot of people. And a lot of people who say that they're religious, like, yeah, not really. So yeah, I, th- I think it's sort of a given to say that religion and deities in general don't hold the place that they once held. Absolutely. Um, obviously, and with I, advancements in astronomy and biology and neuroscience and things like that, um, we can see um, sort of the causes of events uh, uh, which we have previously used religion to justify and explain. Um, so I think that there is less of a need for a deity, or perhaps the, the need for a deity has changed from uh, answers about certain questions about our origins or uh, sort of things that we observe in the universe and move more towards a social thing um, where everybody's like, seems like the general populace tends towards um, like an increase of loneliness and um, we have find it difficult to find community, and so it's easy to churches, churches, religions, gods, uh, spiritualities, whatever you want to call it, um, just seem to be a fairly easy calling card, uh, where it's like, oh, you have this faith, I do too, we have something in common. Right, um, it's a good social, so I think that, good social binder, 100%. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go with Andy, because he was here first, but I just want you to know, like, I just respect you a lot less without seeing your face. Like, I'm, I, I just want you to know that. Like, you can talk. I'm just going to respect your opinion less. But, sure, you can go ahead. <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. If that's well, I don't right. re- expect respect from anybody. Oh, so the of... joke is on you, sir. By the way, I have to say, since we're hearing from Andy right now, uh, Andy and I have a new weekly segment that's starting tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be on... Um, 2 to 6 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, you're going to have to come by to see what it's all about. But, uh, yeah, Andy R. here is going to be mixing it up twice a week for Pangburn. So it's exciting. Rock and roll. It's very exciting. That sounded very cool. Uh, yeah, so anyway. Hopefully. I don't think that God is dead because I think God is kind of a vast term that people don't really agree on. But I think that the old, the older idea of God, so the more fundamentalist and uh, I guess you could say more correct, more true to source material idea of God, is closer to being dead, or at least on life support, or at least embellished. Um, like Yahweh, for example, I would say is more dead than God is, because that's such a specific way of thinking about God and it's one that if you try it to its absolute um, to its absolute most faithful prescription you know you really wouldn't get away with that at least in the West Um, so I wouldn't say that God is dead but I would say that certain ideas about God are either dead or dying and organized religion in general might see a lack of literal or 
fundamentalist belief, although there might not be a, um, there might never be a cessation of general, a general sense of theism or a belief in some kind of metaphysical ideas. So, and I hope not, but, uh, I think that, uh, you know, the more human focused geocentric religions that earth has produced, I feel like eventually those will, uh, not be believed in as literally, you know, once when space travel is incredibly mainstream and maybe we start making contact with other races and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Sorry for that, uh, being so long winded. No, um, I just wanted to follow up because I think that whether God is dead is an interesting question, but I think the more interesting ramifications are the consequences of the death of God or rather, um, the life support of God. So I was wondering if you think that it's a good thing or it's a bad thing. Like, what ramifications do you think that this weakening of the religious spirit has um, had on the world? Morality and all that kind of stuff. Mm. If well, I'm... I think you can get a lot of good out of criticism of religions because a lot of religions have negative caveats to them. And... There are parts of several religions, if not all, there are parts of them that should be criticized and not adhered to because they're immoral. Sure. But it's possible that when people realize that, they go overboard or they have an over-emotional reaction. And it's like, you know, it's like finding out your your parents are flawed human beings, too. You might react to that in a, in a bad way, in a disproportionate way. So that effect might be there. But I don't think it's so large, or at least not in the current day, that we should be too alarmed about that. Sure. Okay. Um, it's Daniel. Um, I feel like I recognize you. Now, it's hard to tell because I don't see your face, which means you're a second-class citizen. But I still want you to speak. So um, if you have anything to say regarding the death of God, whether you think he's dead and whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing... I invite you to give me your uh, take real quick here, and then we'll move on to Jalib and uh, eventually up to Goku. This order is completely arbitrary and random because you don't have faces. I'm just listening in right now. All right, fair enough, man. Uh, if you ever want to speak, just uh, pipe up and I'll call on you because you're, um, so just let me know. Um, Goku, a.k.a. Admiral Xaverfang, uh, please... The death of God. Is he dead? Was the uh, mustachioed German correct? Or is he still alive? And either way, is it good or bad? Why do you why do you have that reaction? That that's I didn't say anything bad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I thought of Hitler. I thought of Hitler. And then I remember who you were talking about. I was like I thought that yeah, you, you were saying was Hitler correct and I was like, you met her favorite German. <laughs> Whoa, no 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 no. <laughs> My favorite German. A conflation yeah, of nature and the my Nazis. My whatever home. ancestor that sailed over from Germany, and now I get to be an American. It's great. That guy's my favorite. A conflation of Nazis and Nietzsche. How are we? Sounds like backtracking to me. Yeah, Nietzsche. Nietzsche's mustache has supremacy over the Hitler mustache. It's much bigger and more epic. Um. Anyway, I, I don't want to make right. that joke. Anyway, uh, uh Zaverfang, please. Yeah, I think Andy and Miller have already made my point for me. Like, what they say, I agree with what they're saying. And it's kind of hard to say, like how Miller put it. Put it. Um, but I can tell you in where I stay, he's not dead. Like, Nigeria is very much alive and You're from Nigeria. thriving, to say the least. So. Back up once again. Because eight. there are lots of, um, it's like a business now, like church, churches. Like, oh, yeah. It's, uh, how should I put it? It's a business, basically. Everyone does it, and they use religion as a business, Christianity. So a lot of people cling to that, and is very much alive in that sense. Mm -hmm. That's what I can give you. Sure. Are you, did you say you're from Nigeria? Um, yes. Very interesting. I didn't know that. Thanks for telling me. Um, you were going to say something else. I'm sorry. Hello? No? Okay. Well, 
Ooh. I'm gonna. I'll be the unpopular one in the room just to make things um interesting. A little bit of devil's advocate, and as the devil's advocate, I will say that God is absolutely dead, and here is why: because God is very vaguely defined, meaning that I can actually back up this claim by just changing the definition to what's convenient for me. Um, basically, the way that I think Nietzsche was thinking about it because I have the authority to read the mind of a dead man, don't question me, um, was God as the social binding force that entire cultures were built on and trusted in was dead. And I think that's basically true. Because while there's a lot of people who still believe in God, it is very hard for you to find a government that still believes in God. Now, like, the U.S. government has it in its texts, but, like, it's it's kind of performative. The best, uh, honestly, the best examples you could think of are maybe, like, Poland and uh, Georgia, maybe, as, like, truly religious states. But um, the rest of the states are expressly secular as far as their government goes and as far as their culture goes, for that matter. No one's getting ostracized for not believing in God. No one's, like, God isn't the primary binding agent of nations anymore. Something else is. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's not God. It's not a shared sense of transcendental morality. It's not church. It's um, it's something else, in the Western world at least. Uh, Ad- Admiral, you might want to tell me what the situation's like over in Nigeria, but I know in the West, um, God isn't the thing that binds together nations. Something like money and political power is. And I think that has been, for all of religion's fault, I think that's been quite t- disastrous. Because you take something like the religious impulse and the religious zeal and the religious instinct, and when you lower it out of the transcendental area where humans aren't supposed to be able to touch it into something like political or government, that's when things get kind of dangerous. For, to me, it kind of explains the 20th century. We tried to replace God with governments, and we got millions of corpses. Um, so I think it's been a pretty large disaster. Um Maybe it was a necessary disaster. I don't know. Only time will tell. But I think God is dead in the sense that Nietzsche meant it. And I think that it is a rather large problem. Uh, BG Killer, please uh, give me your thoughts on the death of God. If anything I said you want to respond to, please do. Um, Is it good? Is it bad? Is he dead at all? Or am I just a crying wolf? BG Killer, I want to hear from you. I'd also like to see your face. It's very important to me. Oh, he's unmuted. Let's go. I got one. Hi. Um, yeah, I, sorry, I just jumped in, so I don't really have any thoughts straight up. Oh my god, another lady. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please, please have awesome ideas. I only, know so of, I only know of one other besides you two, so we love you, and I love you even yeah. more because you showed your face, unlike the rest of these cowards. Thank you. Um, yeah. If you have anything, I said the same thing to it. It's Daniel. If you have anything to say, just raise your hand or pipe up, and I'm going to call on you because I want to hear from you. Yo, we got more people's faces. Let's go. All right, Admiral Zaverfan, can you tell me? <gasps> I've started a revolution. It's a revolution. Dave SP. Dave SP. Dave SP. I don't know if they went anywhere, but. Dave SP and I had like a months long abortion debate at one point. We go way back. Um, Randolph, I started a revolution. Oh, is that? uh, Yeah. Okay. Dave, aren't you you in like law school now or something? One of us is in law school. I'm going to. Yeah, I am uh, enrolled in law school. I will be at some point. It's awesome. It sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the source of all my joy. Have I briefly told you you're a good-looking guy yet, Dave? Somebody yes. definitely did that when I was very intoxicated the last time I was on this channel. I vaguely remember who that I don't know who that was, but somebody did. That sounds like my MO. I'll count it as mine. Oh, yeah. Yes, it did have a, an air of creepiness to it, so. Y'all are dopey as hell. I love it. Okay, so we got a lot more people in the room, lots of faces. It makes me very excited. Um, but I just wanted to ask a quick question to Zaverfang because I don't know anything about where you're at. Um, I said that the West primarily doesn't like 
form its moral foundation in God anymore. I was wondering if that's true in Nigeria or if Nigeria is like general culture and the governmental system still bases its sovereignty, if it still derives it from God or not. Because I'm just curious. I made sweeping statements about the West just now, but now I'm curious. So would you say that's the case or not, not so much? No, it's, it's not the case. It's totally different here. Oh, right. And there are two factions, the Islamic and the Christian groups. And it's thriving and very much alive in Nigeria. The All right. Well, thank you for the update. All right. We are going to yeah. go with um, Dave. Talking about the death of God in the Nietzschean sense, I'm assuming I don't need to give you much of a preamble. My basic questions are, is he actually dead? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? And why? What ramifications does it have on the world and morality, do you think? You know, life stuff. Very simple. I don't don't, don't think that... Uh, God is dead in that sense that uh, society is primarily unmoored from a concept of God in a metaphysical sense. Um, I think there are plenty of examples of uh, theocracies, particularly in the Muslim world, um, and countries which are dominated by uh, fundamentalist uh, religious people. I mean, other than that, I'm not sure what it would mean to say that... um, that God uh, doesn't play a role in many Western societies. I mean, in a sense, he never really did in the sense that it does in a Muslim theocracy, right? I mean, separation of church and state is kind of a a fundamental presupposition of of Western democracy in a lot of ways, at least American democracy. And so, I mean, you you can definitely say that there are fewer people in um, the... uh, in positions of power in the American Republic that actually hold uh, real convictions with respect to God, as opposed to the ones that just pretend they do. You could say that God plays less of a role in government in that way. But it was never really um, a government that was oriented towards any one religion, or at least it wasn't supposed to be. Um, hmm. But I, I, I still think that there's a, a belief in God, explicitly or implicitly, that undergirds a lot of people's intuitions. Um, I would. I. I don't. I don't even think it's unreasonable to say that it's the majority of, of people. So, I don't, I don't think God's dead. Is that good? Um. Well, I think it's difficult to say. I don't think it's good in the Muslim theocracy sense. I think it's quite bad. Um. I think that there's a difference between doctrines. I think that there are significant differences between different faiths and depending on which faith is operating in the background undergirding people's intuitions and beliefs and forming their views on ethics and and morality and virtually everything uh it can be good or it can be the worst thing for civilization as possible so um i don't know i I don't know that i don't know i'm not convinced that it's that it's bad i'm not convinced that it's good um, it's definitely going to be bad if the world's, uh, if, if Muslim theocracies proliferate, though. That would be bad. Hmm. Well, I can't say I really disagree on that last one. Uh, Randolph Richardson, you had yeah. your face on for a second, and that gives you brownie yeah. points. So, uh, please tell me whether you think the death of God is, like, real, or was Nietzsche just a uh, crying wolf? And uh, either way, was it good or bad? And uh, Why? I know you're a pretty know staunch you're... atheist, so I'm kind of curious if you surprised me. I, uh, I think uh, Nietzsche was probably speaking more metaphorically. Uh, I think he's probably reflecting on how people are uh, increasingly leaving religion over time. That That's my suspicion. Um, I don't think there was... I, I'm not convinced there was ever a deity, that, a god that was alive. So I, I, I think really it's a moot point, but... Um, what I do see in society is a, a gradual and decided move away from religious teachings because there are so many horrific things being taught. Um, we saw early on the Magna Carta. Later on, there's um, uh, various um, amendments added to the U.S. Constitution and other countries added uh, protections for people. Gradually, more and more was required. 
um, because uh, governments uh, increasingly realize the importance of having to uh, make sure people are protected properly from aggressors and whatnot, and the older standards just weren't measuring up. Um, and then uh, the abolishment of slavery was a big, big move away from religious ideals. The, um, uh, there's John Rawls' uh, Veil of Ignorance from his uh, publication, Theory of Justice, which is uh, particularly important for lawmakers in, um, uh, as a tool to, uh, to attempt to make laws that are more just and fair for society. And, and the list goes on. We've got the United Nations with the International Declaration of Human Rights. None of these things, uh, as far as I can tell, uh, favor religion. They're, they're all um, deviation. They all deviate from religion and in favor of the individual and freedoms and equality and rights and all this. So I, I do think that uh, the direction we're moving is, is a good direction because it's better for people overall. All right. Thank you. Um, I guess my question would be the 20th century. And I want to pose that as just an extra wrinkle going forward because the most interesting thing to me about Nietzsche, and I've been I've been just kind of reading him. I'm just kind of getting into him. So all you who are older and smarter than me, please correct me if I get anything wrong. Um, but he made some predictions as a result of the death of God that I thought were pretty accurate, like um, politics becoming a type of spiritual warfare instead of just like you know running the nation. Uh, experiments in what he called socialism, but that's just because he was older. Um, that killed millions. Um, stuff like that. So he predicted that that would have like, uh, the advent of nihilism, like he predicted these things would happen as a result of the death of God. And it seemed like they happened. So that's kind of a wrinkle that makes me feel like maybe if you understand the death of God, the way he was understanding it, he was right because his predictions to me seemed to come to pass. I was wondering what everybody else thought about that. Michaela has her hand up and is looking at me in a way that makes me afraid of what she's going to say. Um, so please uh, let me know what you think. I think that with things like predictions or prophecies, if we want to talk about like the Bible, um, is if you stay vague enough and enough time passes, anyone can seem like a prophet. Okay, fair. So, and and I, I, think that, I mean, I predicted the I last Super Bowl winner. Was Sorry? I predicted the last Super Bowl winner, for example. Yeah, some some prophecies are yeah, self-fulfilling because people that's have the made them kind of try to follow them as if this is what's going to happen with the expectation. That's not what it, that's not what a self-fulfilling prophecy is. Sorry, uh, I'm using not. the wrong word. Thank you. Please correct me. Self-fulfilling prophecy is is if enough people call you a dub, you better start looking for feathers. It's like if you hear over and over again your whole life, like you're just a failure. You're never going to succeed. You're never going to amount to anything. Eventually, uh, sometimes, often often is the case where the person who is hearing these things will start to live it out, um, even if they wouldn't have, you know, either would have if they hadn't heard that about themselves over and over So again. is the contention um, that Nietzsche, like, uh, like, bullied the entire earth into fulfilling his prophecies because he was just that big of a brain? He was just that influential? Is that... Oh, yeah, that's not... Okay, okay. That's a comedic straw man, not a real one. I'm just playing. So I, do, I, I have heard about people wanting to make prophecies come real, mm -hmm. and so they'll try to arrange things to happen so that later on down the road they can see this happened. So I guess uh, self-fulfilling prophecy is not the word for that. What would be the correct word? And thank you for the correction. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, you're welcome, and I don't know. There are a lot. Yeah, I don't know the correct word for that, but I know what you're talking about. There are a lot yeah. of people here. I'm going to have to jump around. I am sorry. Um, but I'm also very happy that there are a lot no, of people. No, don't, 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 don't forgive you. Yeah. Russia actively take back all of my joy that I've had with you in conversation. So we're going it's over to Roski because I think he was here first, but honestly, it doesn't matter. And I don't know because I, I can't. If you don't have a face, I just can't, like, remember you. So I'm just going to hope that it was Roski. Um, Roski, we're talking about the death of God. Metaphorically, uh, Randolph made it very clear he believes that God did not literally die because God never existed. 
To that, I say touche. I also say it's not really the topic, <laughs> metaphorically. I'd just like to clarify, because I'm not convinced that God existed. I'm not saying God didn't convinced. exist. Okay, you're right. I should be more exact with other people's beliefs. I know, it happens all the time. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Um, so, Roski, death of God. Do you think God is dead in the Nietzschean metaphorical sense? Yes or no? And is that good or bad? Please, I want your hot take. You're the expert everybody needs. Roski, you're letting me down here. Going once. Going twice. Sold, but not to you. Okay. Pax, you're next on the chopping block. I, I shouldn't need to give the intro again. Pax, please. Hello? Yeah, I think you're having trouble. You're muting and unmuting. You have to give the intro here. again. <laughs> Pax, I, I, I think he's talking. I just don't hear him. Um, it's so sad. It's two. It's zero for two. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, John Boy and Jack Rooney. Um, you, your guys' faces are loading. I can't see him. Can anyone else see their faces? Michaela, you're muted. Uh, John, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Everyone hear from me? Yeah, uh, you're not hearing anyone. Just try to uh, just disconnect and reconnect. All right, it's my fault. I see. It's always my fault. It's okay. It was really funny. Roski was just getting into his uh, thing there, and then you were like, oh, "Okay, that's enough from you." <laughs> I'm sorry, Roski. I love you. Hopefully you can get that back. And then, and then that jerk, are John. We, are we back? <laughs> That's the beauty of live theater. Yeah, John. I, let's, let's let Roski get back at what he was yes, saying. Yes, please. I promise I like you. Okay, so I, I, was, I still subscribe to Nietzsche. And uh, Nietzsche said that we fear that we are not getting rid of God because we are not getting rid of grammar. The grammar that we use is still still holds the what is it? It's the Hebrew grammar and, you know, the Hebrews were the ones that came up with the Israel God. So like there's the, the concept of God, I think is much more complex than, you know, like the big man in the sky. So it's, um, it's, it's something that's wrapped up within our own grammar. So I would say that God, you know, God's more of a concept and it's a concept that we all use. So it's not something that we can really get away with. Hmm. So he's With alive. How, like rewriting fundamental, you know, the, the the fundamental building blocks we use to organize society. So God's alive and he's hiding in the language, um, metaphorically speaking. If I'm getting you right, yeah. Do you think? Yeah, that's I would good? say that. Do you think that's good or so or not? No, I don't have a, a good or bad opinion on it. That's just the way that I see it. All right, that's my enough. descriptive argument. This is very off topic, but Admiral, I really like your curtains. I just want just I just want to put that out there. Um, okay, um, John Boy, um, and also Yo. Captain Jack is here. Okay, we gotta get to you because I remember you from when I first joined this server. Okay, John Boy. Oh my God, Jack! I didn't recognize you. You shaved your head. You told me that, but I forgot. It's pretty good. Fresh. Hi. Fresh. This is what you get on the God is dead, server. Huh? All right. Um. So, and I'm not super well read on on Nietzsche as much as probably many of you are, but the the way that I interpreted it um, was a little bit of uh, rhetorical hyperbole, maybe. Um, I think it's clear for most of us um, that that God is still around for many people, at least in terms of belief. Um, good or bad, I guess is the next question. Um, I think there's a lot that is good about what the trend was um, that he identified. In the sense that I think um, we've tried to make moves at allowing science to answer some questions that maybe it wasn't able to answer prior. Um, and people have started to take a bit of a more analytical and empirical view of the world. I think that's that's very positive. Um, you know, I also think that's a good response to um, some of the more, how do I want to describe it, fundamentalist or radical religious views that I think most people believe are immoral. Um, so in that sense, I think I think it's good. Um, my question um, would be, you know, what is the baby in the bathwater 
um, you know, what is the benefit of some of these traditions? Um, you know, what do we stand to lose, you know, if we deviate so far from the historical context where, um, you know, we, we lose some of the value that I think they present um, in terms of tradition and other things. I don't, I don't have a perfect answer for what those, those things would be, but I, I, my intuition is that there's, there's some value there that we want to maintain. I, um, I very much agree um, with most of everything you said, especially the uh, what we stand to lose. Um, that's honestly an entire discussion in itself. I think best answers yeah. are social cohesion and the risk of driving the religious instinct and the religious impulse into some other field where it's much more destructive. Um, yeah. Which, personally, that's what I think is going on in politics right now. I think our politics have become our religion and now we're having holy wars. Um, essentially, and it's horrible. But that's an entire new discussion. And but if you want to riff off that, you know, this is all this is all free. I'm a, I'm a pretty libertarian guy with moderation, so you guys can take it wherever you want. Captain Jack, I know uh, you're rather free spirited as well. So um, let me know uh, what you think about all this. I, assu- I assume I assume I don't need to give you an introduction. That's a really fun way to put it. Admiral Zaber Fang is thirst trapping me over here. I just want you to know it's very hard for me to. Like, I know, I know it's very hard for me to stay focused on this stuff when you're uh, just uh, showing it up over there. No, I don't want to shame you. I, I just, I just want to let I you know. It just flops on everybody. I know, the God, flexing. Christ. So <laughs> God is dead. Zaber Fang killed. When it comes to like the God is dead thing, I don't think that. I don't even think that Nietzsche literally meant it in that way. I don't think that anybody ever meant like God actually got like killed or anything like that. Oh, but no, I do fact. think that the idea, you know, that uh, I do think the idea that God is dead comes from more of like an intellectual or like a, uh, a perspective where people like Nietzsche or people in the realm of Nietzsche have decided that God isn't an essential part of our life anymore. It's not necessary to have him involved for us to do the things that we go about doing in life. We can have our own morals. We can have our own understanding without a God. And because of that, God being dead isn't really, at least to me, a thing about him not being like around anymore. It's just not necessary. You can still have him, you know, God, he's just not there anymore. He's not like actively, you know, doing anything in our lives because we've moved past the need for a God. I love you, Jack. (laughs) that's, That's kind of where I'm at with that specifically, whether it's good or not. I think it's good because, I haven't seen um, too many things uh, so far that go to show that, like, over a long-term thing, that uh, religions are good. They've led to most of the wars that we've ever had. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can see that moving away from stuff like that would be better. Is it going to be better overall? I'm not sure because I can't predict the future. But with a track record like religions has and moving away from that and to we should get into something else and whether, whether it's like you said, politics or whether it's another field, I think it's, um, I think that being afraid of the evil we don't know versus the evil we do know is ridiculous and we need to try new things. Okay. Um, I'm going to be That's an apologist say, for one second. I'm going to inhabit the body of William Lang- Langcraig and I'm going to steal one of Michaela's points actually of basically saying we've been religious basically forever Meaning that while religion doesn't have a very good track record, neither does anything else, because this is something Michaela said, which is very smart, which is why I'm stealing it, is we don't have anything to really Thank you. I need to correct you, though. Because oh. William Lane Craig is not the one who came up with that. You put some respect I on Sam Harris. I didn't name. say he came up with that. I just said I'm going to be an apologist, and therefore I'm going to be like him. That was my only point. I, I'm still... Okay. The point on... Don't, we have don't nothing use to William's con- name to make Sam... Point. It's it's kind of like what you said, Jack, and it's kind of the two sides of the same coin, is the fact you've been religious basically forever means, one, we can't say it's, like, all that bad because we don't have any real long track record to compare it to. It's apples and oranges. But, B, we can't say it's all that good because we're comparing it against a hypothetical that doesn't exist. Like, it's the same problem, is that we've never tried anything else. I'm more, I'm more willing to give a shot to something new than something that hasn't been working, like you said, for forever. Well... So it hasn't been working relative to hasn't been working. We don't really know if it hasn't worked. Or something that isn't working or hasn't well, worked. That's even a- even in your premise, you betray your disposition because hasn't been working is completely relative to something else that like would work better, and we don't. Again, we haven't. We don't know that yet. So it's well, very. Uh, I don't necessarily think it has to work better in that aspect. I think that it just has to work differently in order for that to work. Whether it works better or worse is kind of relevant in that. 
It could, think, I don't, or, or I'm just thinking something new needs to be tried. I don't think that it, I'm saying that it has better data to work better. Sure. I'm thinking that based on this, there's it, there's no reason to not try something else. Whether or not it works better or not is not here or there. Michaela? When you say works better, do you mean accomplishing the same ends with means that are generally less harmful or open to, to be easily exploited? There's a lot of, um, yeah, because there's a lot of messages and stuff like that inside our religion, like, you know, be nice to people, don't be a prick, that I think could, you know, still go on really well, but don't need to be packaged in this insanely convoluted <laughs> thing. You just don't be, you know, it could, it could be just don't be a prick and, like, we can get on with our lives on that. Well, if God does, but it could be, it can be put in different ways. I think we can reach those same end goals that religion tries to get to without enforcing it with a, you know, all-powerful thing at the top of it. Sure. Like, you'll burn um, forever if you don't do the right thing. I'm stealing the mic, unfortunately. I'm so sorry. Not to use it for myself, but to um, distribute it to the proletariat <laughs> who are um, who are lacking of enough mics. So, Jollob, you were in and then you were out and now you're back in. Uh, we're talking about the death of God. Hopefully you've been listening long enough. I don't need to give you an intro. Please give me your thoughts. Yeah, well, I was going to say that um, it, it depends on which God, again, that you talk about. Like, this is... Metaphorically. Um, the of theology. <laughs> Yeah, metaphorically, again, like this, this, if the concept is to a Western European kind of notion of God, which existed with, during the times of nature, then I think it's self-evidently true that that's the case. Um, if, it's, if, it's, if you look at the sort of the pantheistic religions of both Europe and the rest of the world, um, that concept of you know, nature being divine or reality being divine or whatever, I think that's a perspective that um, shifts focus completely and I think that can't be disproved or dismantled by any philosopher and um, if we're talking about morality I think that was uh, I, was, I just want to tune into the the claims that um, Jack and um, Ms. Miller M. Miller uh, M. Miller was saying before hi um, about morality and you know this is this is going back to the human perspective again like when we talk about accomplishment of um, the same goals of religion like it's it's kind of to me it's they're just uh, tracks that run parallel to each other, so they really don't cross, I would say, because we're talking about, um, like, let's look at a problem like, I don't know, um, gay marriage or something like that. If you look at that and you look at what religion says or most religions say is good, is now counterproductive to what the secular society says. And the only criticism I would have of <clears throat> accomplishing goals or, you know, I think what Jack was saying was, accomplishing the good that religion has done or we can follow it like don't be a prick to another person what would imply being a prick <clears throat> i mean i think that would have a presupposition of its own like if if we could establish what that that you know goal was then you know we can justify the ends that met and you know um meet the goal but we don't even know what the what the presuppositions are so it's 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 a bit difficult you know when you're talking cross paths like that like oh we should do the good stuff and not be pricks to other people but what is being a prick i mean that's that's actually the whole goal of the resort problem that he proposes so until we are really clarified on that i think it's all an intuitional game like this is better and that's worse and you know um we can keep this and not be a prick to somebody and like what what does a prick involve i mean being a prick involved jolly Right. Only if you accept Hume's proposition, I think that um, while we can't specifically say what not being a prick means, um, yeah. when someone is a prick to you, uh, you, you can usually tell. Um, there are certain things that are prick-like um, that are clear, even if it's not clear what it means to always not be what. You know what I mean? Like there are so just because yeah. we can't know all of it doesn't mean we can't know enough of it. You know, in order to be productive and move forward with this new, yeah. You know. right. well, well, just, 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 just like case, Jack, I, could, Jack. I could start. Being, I, I could be extremely rude to anyone, and then I could just call myself not a prick because we don't know what it's like to be a prick. You don't know what a prick is. Right, 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 you know, that's yeah, exactly. so because. And the thing is, it's when and when somebody in this actually works. When somebody's an asshole, it's not up to the person to decide whether yes, they are Louis an asshole or not. That. It is, it is not up to the person to decide whether they're an asshole. It's up to the people around them to decide when they're an asshole. So when yeah. someone's a prick, they don't get to because choose whether they are not. or not. They, they get that decided for them by the people around them. But you'd agree well, that's, that's a good way to segue into, into John J. Parker's point then, because um, that now politics has now become that, that different means um, where, you know, you get, 
the, the liberal side of the faction, or you get the authoritarian side of the libertarian side, and people are... Why did this jump together, though? Why does it jump there? Because I think that's when we coexist together, and um, you have, like, you know, you the fat-shaming movement, for example, against, you know, the, the libertarian movement where, you know, freedom of speech, and then there's speech censoring, and then, you know, every, every party's calling each other pricks for basically... You know, some, right, yeah, exactly. I'm going to jump yeah, in so real quick. Fact, the brilliance behind David Hume's is art problem is, it, I mean, it's, it's pretty much just fact and opinion, and opinions are relative, you know? And they're, they're, and it, they're based off of values, and values are relative. And so there's right. this gap in philosophy, yeah. and, and we, can't, and, we can't close the gap. Right, and God was and the thing that filled the gap, and, though. And, opinions are relative, and facts can be wrong. Like, right. a fact doesn't mean a truth claim. A sure. fact means something that is asserted, which can be proven or disproven. So in the same way that opinions are relative, not all yeah. facts are true. And to Roski's yeah, point, course, course, course. To Roski's point mm-hmm. God was the thing that theoretically bridged that gap because he was morality and values, yeah. but made absolute and unquestionable. He, yeah, he yeah, was the bridge yeah. between those two like things. The, the absolute moral, the universal morality. And so now, so, uh, if I, if I absolute, hold on, hold on, <laughs> mo- moderator time, just for one second. I'm going to pause just for one second. There are a lot of people, and I know a lot of the time you aren't talking. So in the live uh, text chat, you can find a link to this YouTube. If you're not actively talking and you're bored, please participate in the YouTube chat. We want activity there, and ideas can still flow as long as you're not talking. I'm trying to get to everybody, but I also don't want to break up good discourse. I noticed I just had to do it just now, and I didn't like it, so... I so if I'm blue balling you, find your release in the YouTube chat. Cool, cool. Okay, um, I am Can gonna I just finish that point. And just... Yeah, please finish job and then we're gonna move the mic around. Yeah, I'll mute myself after. That. As a, um, basically, as an anecdotal evidence, um, I remember because I was working for a political party here in Australia, and um, our party is going, you know, the pro, um, you know, the marriage equality laws, and there was a bunch of Christians that used to come out, or you know, just conservative religious people that would come and try to you know block hold that that policy from being put into place and ironically i actually noticed this human paradox in this statement because a lot of the people that were arguing against these detractors were from my party were saying things like oh you know morality doesn't exist you know you guys are living a you know, a hallucination, a dream. This is this is none of this is true. Like you know, all this going to hell, going to heaven, crap that you're going on about with your God. That's just nonsense. And ironically, and then they started calling them, name calling them, and using ad hominems as as to how how fucked up they were for holding the beliefs. And that, that the human paradox was just blowing, blinding me in my face. Look, looking at that, well, on what grounds are you calling these people wrong or evil? Or look at what, what basis do we have to say that these they're you know, intuitive views, which they might be, are wrong, like, on what grounds. It's just paradoxical to me, at least. Sure. I, I think it's a very hard problem. I agree. I don't know the answer. I'm not going to pretend like I could even attempt it, so I'm not going to. Uh, J Square C, you don't have a face cam, but your avatar does have a face. So I guess that counts for something, meaning you're up next. Um, hopefully you've been listening long enough. I don't need to give you an intro. If you do need some prompting, let me know, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Nietzschean death of God and everything else we've been talking about so far. Actually, I'm just here to listen because I got not much opinion upon this, but I guess in terms of God, uh, usually when I talk about God, I talk about the pantheist God again, uh, be, being truth, eternal, and existing. So, so uh, in terms of Nietzsche saying that God is dead, I guess it's uh, like I'm not. I guess I for me personally, I haven't read much of Nietzsche yet, so that's one point. And then um, from what I heard from other people saying, um, I guess the uh, fundamental Christian God, where you know all loving, it's not really that convincing in the first place for me. So I guess that's my own stance against that. So yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, thanks for your input. Listening is uh, very much appreciated. Um, if you do have anything you want to say, just pipe up and I'll call on you. Um, if you have anything else, there were more people in here, weren't they? Okay, David Pixel Pie. I don't actually know you. Everyone else I've recognized, I do not recognize you. So um, if this is your debut, I'm happy I can welcome you. Uh, we're talking about Nietzsche and the death of God. And uh, whether it's good or not. So please give me your thoughts. I'd love to get your hot takes. 
Yeah, I'm not here very often, but uh, but it was just uh, I think we just came very quick to a problem that has been with us for a very long time, which is you know like many many of us here, especially uh, for instance like Captain Jay Kurini, he we are very mostly like rationalists, right? But at least I I like to think myself as a rationalist, so we like we would like a morality that would be derived from from rationality. That's that's not like the first or or, or the, one of the reasons we. We deny the existence of the existence of a, of a universal morality derived from our course because of, because of rationality. But the problem is that uh, when we started, when many people start saying, uh, "Yeah, look, maybe we have an intuition of what a, of what being a prick is, or or, uh, or what being a, a bad person is." Well, the thing is that it's, it's just an, an intuition, basically like like a feeling that uh, that uh, many people have. I mean, it's not very universal, and so it, it doesn't come from anything. Anything that uh, that uh, that a rationalist would, would like, so yeah, we have that uh, that interesting conundrum there. For from, in, in, in one side, we deny the existence of God because of some some rational uh, derivation from morality, but but on the other hand, we, we we just people like Sam Harris, for instance, he just he just said that he just says that uh, well, look, most people have a, a basic intuition of what uh, good is and what bad is, but so we should just follow that intuition, it's like replacing. People saying, "Hey, man, look, I feel, I feel that uh, God is is what we should believe." To hey, I, I, we, let's just believe on whatever our biology condition us to to feel what is good or bad. So yeah, we just went from one if it, irrational point to another, I, I guess. So yeah, that's not. If, cool. if I may, there's more. Yes, there's much more proof of our subjective feeling of feeling uh, than there is. Of a god, um, so I don't think it's I don't think it's irrational to say that there are some intuitions that we just have and some feelings that we just don't like or that are non beneficial. I mean, if you take the example of just just one example, um, the feeling of shame. It actually there's uh, the work of Stephen Porges and polyvagal theory suggests that shame is not just an emotion; it's a physiological process that over time can be harmful. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, so, they, 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 so, so therefore, it, it, yeah. So like, therefore, it, it's not morally right to make a person feel. Uh, yeah, there's ashamed. definitely some m many emotions of like like the one you described, like like shame. Of uh, they definitely have a biological background. We, we have able we have been able to uh, to to come from that conclusion. For instance, there, there, there was a there was an example from from I think uh, I don't remember what was there, but uh, but it was very very I think it was very clear. For instance, we know that uh, if. if if you put put your hand on on on, on a fire, let's say, uh, well, you're gonna experience pain, and most people will say, hey, look, we should we shouldn't burn each other because that, that that is painful, and that so that, that, is, that is a bad thing, right? But uh, but what if what if you I don't know, have to have to go through a fire to save to save your children or something like that, right? So so the the so basing morality just on on on, on the release of chemicals in the brain to to signal you what is what is what is painful? What is not? It's not. It's not I don't think it's very reliable. No, well, it's just that, that the context of the emotions is is important. The context of a feeling is a uh, very important. Um, uh, you mentioned Stephen Harris. Uh, uh, he he mentions how um, if you have just finished working out and you like feel it in your muscles and kind of sore and your love burns, that's a satisfying feeling. But if you woke up in the middle of the night and suddenly felt that way for no reason, you'd Freak out and call nine one one. Like so, the context is important, and I think that with our self awareness and our uh, presumably high reasoning skills, uh, we're capable of deciphering. Things. So what if what if we let's say develop some sort of a drug or brain implant or some technology to deceive you to to feel to feel a, a, a pleasant feeling while well, you're being hurt, for instance, would that make you? Would that be? You don't even. You don't need a. Um. You don't need a special. Uh. You don't need a special machine for that. Um, <laughs> some people experience that organically, and we know that when your wires get crossed between pleasure and pain, um, you know, it's just speaking from personal experience, it's not necessarily a great thing to be. Uh, in a puddle of blood while your dog licks it up and your roommates find you. That's not ideal. Uh, that's not in anyone's best interest. <laughs> Even though it may have been a subjectively enjoyable experience, 
for one of the parties involved. Um, things like that, very specific examples like that. Obviously, it's easy to tell what's right and wrong. And I think that it will be. Um, we, we do have some choices to make. Um, whether or not we make them of our own free will is a whole other discussion. But <laughs> there are questions in morality that we can answer, even if we can't answer all of them at the moment. All right, hey, gonna... can we can we go back for a second? I just uh, I had a question real quick. You yeah. said that shame was immoral. That was something I wanted to challenge you on. If that's all right. Yeah. Certain I wouldn't say all shame, but certain kinds. Um, whenever it's the top, the sort of the type of shame that is triggering a polyvagal or negative polyvagal response in a human, um, I think we can see why that's objectively harmful. Okay, wait, well, yeah, I agree with that. I just shame and guilt is something I'm very interested in. So. I said unnecessary shame, um, misplaced shame, uh, disproportionate shame, you know, screaming at your child and making them feel ashamed because they dropped their water bottle on the cribbage board and one of the pegs broke. Um, that's, uh, that's not beneficial. Making someone feel ashamed, uh, maybe slightly ashamed because they're doing something that is harmful. Uh, if it gets them to stop, do the ends justify the means? I think situational. Sure. So we, we moved on to that point because we were talking about intuition and how our intuition can be wrong. And I think we're talking about the intuition of God as well. Um, is that what we're talking about? Well, we were talking about basis for morality and how God was basically the only objective. Um, and I do objective in quotes just because not everybody believes in God. But the idea of God is a source of objective morality. And with the idea of God basically being up for opinion... Now it's just one more subjective basis of morality, and all morality is subjective. And we were kind of talking about different bases for morality, and basic human intuition came up as one, and that's how we got where we are, I believe. Um, but there's more people I want to talk to, like uh, Loki. I think that moral flaw, though, is, okay, the, uh, is the God, that God model is sort of a dishonest relational uh, morality. You know, there's a stipulation that the God means certain things uh, that are presumptively stipulated without honestly stating what those are and with a, an extortionate presumption that everybody else recognizes the same things without even being consciously aware of them. And then that can be used objectively, relationally to itself, which is a massive logical fallacy. It's incredibly dishonest when it's used that way. Uh, what exactly is incredibly dishonest? I'm sorry. Stipulating the foundational presumptions of that deity model and then rationally extrapolating on them when they're arbitrary, subjective, sure. and passive-aggressively imposed on others who don't necessarily agree to them or understand the same basis of them, and neither do the people who usually use it that way, or they wouldn't be able right. to play that game unless they're institutional predators who are essentially narcissists or psychopaths which a lot of leaders are in business government and religion so but it doesn't have to necessarily be a deity stru structure right it can just be any moral foundation that is stipulated to and then forced upon others would you agree that. There's a lot of similarity, and there have actually been genetic and social psych and developmental studies that show that the basis of religion, politics, and sexuality have massive similarities. And some people deal better with complexity and chaos than others. A lot of people pick all of those in order to try to simplify their lives because they don't develop the life skills to deal with the more difficult situations. I guess my question for you, Loki, would be, so you're happy with this subjectivity. You would, you think it's a good thing that uh, God isn't being forced upon anybody culturally anymore. Do I have that basically right? Um, I wouldn't say that's not being done. Uh, you know, if you look at, you know, there are certain forms of Christianity, Islam, or that's done maliciously uh, and whether it's via some mix of social economic or violent means uh, it varies or you know, legal systems essentially are violent uh, through economic uh, you know, or police uh, you know and there are a lot of legal 
issues are based around Abrahamic deity presumptions. But, yeah, it's also dishonest because there's no single uh, commonality even within Abrahamic religions. You know, there are a lot of Christians who look at their you know, theology as um, you know, being based on metaphor and parable uh, and, and interpretive wisdom you know, and not you know, the literalism and inerrancy that other you know, sects assert. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the assumption or stipulation that pretends that it's all one uniform system with a singular basis is also incredibly dishonest and simply a big lie. What's, I don't understand the specific critique of the theistic hypothesis for the metaphysics of morality. Right. I mean, it seems to me that it's just it's framing a hypothesis just like any other position on the metaphysics of morality frames a hypothesis says, here's a bunch of stipulations or propositions, and if these propositions are true, uh, let's see what we can let's see what kind of moralities we can cook up using these propositions as a as a backdrop. I don't know. I don't know what's dishonest about that. I mean, well, it, it, I, 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 can, I can frame any number of hypotheses. That, that I want to. Can I back up uh, Loki's point with that as well? Because I think I'd definitely like to back him up on that. Because um, the concept of Christianity being one single metric, or even Judaism, I think Judaism is a better example because I was talking to a member on here whose name is Swaxi, and he was mentioning that majority of the Orthodox Jewish sects in um, in America and Western Europe have adapted a different metric of God, a non-personal, impersonal God within their framework. And and, you know, like if we use call the um, word um, Abrahamic religion, Judaism being one of the the, the oldest forms of Abrahamic faiths, um, they have managed to change their their position from a personal male, you know, um, personal God to to something more sort of impersonal energy, like um, akin to the Force in Star Wars, is is quite. Remarkable. So, yeah, like we we, we could just highlight that those guys out. Um, you know, just they're just atheistic straight out because they've 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 changed their notion of God, or maybe it was always there and they just highlighted this concept a bit. I still don't understand what's dishonest though. I mean, that's, they have a different yeah. hypothesis. Okay. Well, when there's when when you claim. Well, are you familiar with the literalism and in inerrancy dogma that's common to Southern Baptists and to some other branches of so-called Christianity? Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, that assumes that a Bible, which, if you look at it that way, has dozens of irreconcilable factual contradictions just within itself, you know, assuming that that context is... They don't think so. Mm -hmm. It's simply a big lie with itself before you even move on to any interpretation. But, uh, you know, a healthy religion tends to involve, you know, some cult wisdom reflections to help people function in particular social contexts. And what those are, if you're in a cold northern environment with nuclear families hoarding food for winter and having shelter before kids is a lot different than, say, if you were in Polynesia, where it's healthy in a closed yeah. island culture without a lot of external disease, where there's food available for the picking year-round, minimal shelter, to require a maiden to birth a healthy child before being allowed to settle down with a long-term marital partner and you know, focused on child rearing and not fucking your ass off as a horny teenager. Uh, and that process also... Uh, creates a confused paternity or community investment in you know, child rearing collectively that in a tribal culture is more functional than the idea of nuclear isolated couples. Loki, 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 let right. Dave, let the Dave respond. Thing. I think you're conflating the idea of being wrong about the inerrancy with being dishonest about it. I mean, if I think the Bible is inerrant, I could be wrong, but if, as long as I actually think that, it's not dishonest to frame, a hypo to frame a hypothesis and be wrong about it, so long as you're honestly representing what you believe. I, I don't see any dishonesty. I think the people that say that this other Baptist you reference, that they, the Bible is inerrant, they actually think it's inerrant. It's part of their hypothesis. It's, it's I'll go to bed. Good night, boys. Finally, Caleb. I'll miss you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um. Th- l- this is a debate I've actually had with Loki a couple times, so I'm not really sure if I want to spend a ton of time on it. Um. To be honest, not because I think either of you are wrong, just because it's not what we're talking about. Basically, the difference between being very, very wrong and in wrong in a way that seems very obvious to a lot of people, as opposed to just being dishonest, which means knowing you're wrong and saying it anyway. Um. I think those two things are different. Um. But Loki's point is well taken. Uh, but Loki's point about um, is well taken about apparent contradictions in the Bible. Um, I'm gonna jump to Simba and then I'm gonna jump to Sergeant Kipling. I want to get refocused on our actual topic, the uh, the death of God, and uh, whether he is dead in the Nietzschean metaphorical sense and whether or not that's a good thing. So Simba, you've been sitting in here for a while, so I want to reward you. Um, everybody, remember, any for anyone new, in the live text chat right above the live hangout, there is a link to the YouTube uh, video for this. So um, go ahead and activate in the chat if you aren't being called on to speak at the moment because there's a lot of people in the room. Um, Simba, go right ahead. Going once. Go in twice. Sold, but not to you. It's so sad. Maybe if you had your face cam on, it would have worked. Anyway, Sergeant Kipling has a cat face, which is like half a point. I don't know. It's kind of close to a face cam. We're going we're gonna to call it good. Um, Sergeant, we are talking about the Nietzschean death of God. Not the literal death of God, but when Nietzsche said that God was essentially dead as the binding moral agent for Western society and predicted the 20th century and then the 20th century happened. Do you think that he was right in his predict in his uh, dec- declaration of God being dead? Do you think that's good or bad, and why exactly? Sergeant, you're up. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh, I just tuned in here. I'm familiar with that quote by Nietzsche, but I, I don't really know the context enough to um, to kind of elaborate on how I feel about it. I mean, being a Christian myself. In- instinctively i'm like that sounds retarded to me but uh like i said i i don't really know i know there's a lot more to it um so yeah i'll, I'll leave that to you boys all right well to speed run the context for anyone new who isn't um who isn't around basically nietzsche saw the renaissance and the enlightenment and he saw like the birth of rationality and science starting to triumph over the power of the church and said hey look at that our cultures and our societies aren't completely decided by religion anymore People think for them. People um, use reason and rationality and science now to try to find their moral ways in the world instead of looking directly to the church. And he thought that that basically hearkened the death of God as the all-powerful binding cultural agent. Um, So that's a bit of context. And then he predicted the 20th century, which is very interesting. BG Killer, I, I am... I am asking you if you want to say anything just because I like you so much and you've had your face cam on and I'm just dying to like reward you in some way for having your face cam on so if you want to talk now's the time if not you can just keep listening it's fine yeah um I would say that I probably agree with it um based on my own experience I grew up in like a catholic kind of um, environment so I was very much influenced by that and I had a point where God basically died in my eyes and I was pretty much convinced that it's all bullshit and you know, we've been lied to and then as I started going into my 20s I started seeing that there were more sides to religion and spirituality and that I think the way I see the Bible now is that it's It's a lot of stories and a lot of them are quite metaphorical. But what I've seen, like being a young person in this society and like the Western world, is that there seems to be like a a real lack of faith and community. And I think that's one of the things that comes from religion is that it brings people together and they have this, this faith that binds them. And there doesn't seem to be so much of that. It seems to be a lot of people doing their own thing and a lot of isolation. So in that way, I, I would say that, yeah, people are getting their uh, their um, morality from different areas and not necessarily turning to religion for that. And I think even 
that there's some separation between the people who do, the people who are religious and the people who aren't, and a lot of people who don't have that religious or spiritual influence. There's not a lot of faith there. It's There's a lot of rationality and, uh, yeah. Do you think that's good? That's kind of my two cents. I'm just going to ask you one more probing question. Do you think that's a good thing, mm-hmm. or would you prefer a little bit less uh, rationality all the way down and a bit more faith? faith? You know, s- simple questions, I'm sure. <laughs> Not mm-hmm. really. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a good thing. I- I'm not sure that it's a bad thing, because I- it- what concerns me is how much a lot of what's in the biblical text has been misconstrued and um it it might lead to i in my eyes it seems to have led to a lot of um a lack of compassion you know people talk about doing the right thing morally and they don't necessarily think about the circumstances that might lead someone to do something wrong in the first place and for instance like um the way that uh drugs are criminalized as opposed to being like uh seen as like a medical condition like addiction mm. um so yeah I don't, I don't think it's a, a very good thing but i wouldn't I, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing either i think things are just changing and the, the whole landscape of religion and spirituality in the in the west is really changing a lot all right well Thank you for your two cents. I appreciate you. Um, I am going to move the mic over to Benson because he has a face cam, which means he's my new favorite person. The rest of you, like, you're all right, but Benson over here is my main man. Um, I also don't know if I recognize you from the server. My memory could just be horrible, but if this is your first time in a voice chat, um, welcome, welcome. Thank you for making your debut. As you might have heard, we're talking about the death of God, metaphorically speaking. Um, and whether it's good or bad, and what ramifications it has for the world and for morality. Uh, you heard BJ Killer give her um, very uh, s- sharp answer. What do you think, mate? Uh, thanks for having me. I've been on one time before with Trav uh, in a tavern a couple like months ago. Uh, I teach high school, so yeah, the Zoom thing is very personal to me, uh, how <laughs> insane it is. Um I've been thinking about just how civilization functions in general a lot recently, just with, you know, all of the different, you know, wages and the great quote unquote resignation and, you know, those kind of factors. And religion is one that I've always also studied kind of on the side. Um, I don't, I don't have an answer whether, uh, kind of like, um, BG Killer said, I don't know if I have an answer of the potential decline is good or bad. Um, I do know that one of the things of the trends that I regularly see in in world history is this notion that humans have this extremely savage side, and we basically use many different methods to tribalize against one another. Um, you know, and you could say that it's for resources. You could say that it's for land, which would be a resource, whatever else it is. Um, for me, it's, it's really just about creating the reason yet also connected side, if you will, um, for a sustainable future for not just humans, but also, um, other species as well. It sounds like a hippy dippy, like, you know, philosophy and whatnot. Um, I just think that, you know, morality and such that develops, um, it could be from religious tradition, um, not from stuff that we see from the Old Testament, like slavery that many, you know, modern thinkers have pointed out is it's ridiculous that we would take that seriously. Um, but I just, my thing that always goes back to is like, when everyone is embracing an ideology, what is the point where they say, yes, you have to make boundaries because that's, you know, for safety and, you know, uh, security and whatnot, but what's the point where people basically start saying that, you know, always looking at the enemy is on the outer, because at some point it goes to justify that, you know, it's like endless war, if you will. Um, 
So to bring it back to Nietzsche, I would say I think he was partially right, but I I don't know if I could say for full certain. Okay. Hey John, I got something that'll rock the boat. Please, I love I love boat rocking. I was about to throw a firebomb in, but I prefer it when other people do. So yeah, give me something. Hell yeah. Okay, all right. So when Nietzsche said that the uh, God was dead, he continued with dread. So it's not something that's you know like uh, that's positive from his perspective. Hundred percent. And. He, uh, one of the things that he continued with was what water is there for us to clean ourselves? And so th the argument that I want to make is it's one where if you can define God as the absolute moral universal, then it is, it's, it's a tragedy that we've lost that. I mean, I, agree. So, yeah, I think that, I think and in that uh, quote, like, in, and I'm it, sorry, I'm sorry. Well, and in that quote, he kind of goes on to talk about, like, look, with God dead, essentially, with in his formulation, um, it means that humans are basically going to have to rise up and become something higher to, be, to like, fill the gap. Like, this ties into his idea of the Ubermensch. He thought we were going to have to kind of create our own values. Right. We um, would have to become God simply to appear right. worthy of it. Exactly. I'm going to post the quote in the live chat, in the, in the live text for a second. But I, another thing, like a real, a reason why I believe God is dead is um, in the Nietzschean sense. Again, I'm not saying literally, um, not saying literally, um, is because this seems to be of what happened. Like this seems to be like now we're more divided. We're incredibly divided in terms of our baseline values. Like, um, Again, like, I think the spiritual war in politics is kind of reflective of that. And I think that um, we have tried to create our own values. I feel like we have tried to make government and politics and shove them into the role of God. And in these ways that he kind of predicted that would happen. So that's what lends me to believe it. So um, to Roski's point. So Roski, finish your point, please. So the, the idea I've been thinking about this recently um, and one of the things that I, I struggle with is not able to prove the existence of such absolute morality. Um, a while back, Pingler asked me what the object of it was, and I was like, well, it's God. But, <laughs> you know, we don't really have the object of God. So, you know, we're kind of screwed there. But if you, if you want to keep this just, like, within, you know, logical terms and then accept the premise that God is the top of the hierarchy of morality and that morality exists outside of propositional logic, then it, it can be reasoned with, it can be understood. And the way that I understand it is that we're wrapped up within evolution, right? And evolution has been evolving towards something. And we also have developed this uh, a conscience, you know, uh, intuition about right and wrong. And if we break that conscience, then we feel guilt. Now, guilt's different from shame because guilt is when you break a moral principle when you're not following this universal morality, when shame is purely social. So guilt is personal, well, shame is social. And I mean, it's it's the reason why uh, Black, during the civil rights movement, shame but no guilt for standing up for themselves and for those that supported them. And so it's shame, is, it's purely culturally relevant, but guilt is independent from it. And the, the cynics, figured that out a long, long time ago, which is why they went out and, you know, were like the first hippies or something. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my argument is that evolution itself reasons for the existence of such absolute. Okay. Does anyone want to respond to that? Because it's going to take me a little bit more to chew on, to be perfectly honest. Um, if anybody has anything. One minor side point. Uh, uh, yeah. The, uh, I would disagree that a goal of, you know, modern law is a substitute for deity structure. But one of the big problems with some courts has been pretending that the idea of non-sectarianism equals a legal obligation of religious neutrality, which would be closer to secularism. The, the uh, non-sectarianism ends up being a common judicial fraud in some U.S. judges and courts, uh, pretending that it's sort of like Protestant-leaning Abrahamic light, which generally is like you know, generic uh, you know, cultural Judaism mixed with uh, non-Jesus so-called Christianity, uh, you know, averaging out the, you know, like Episcopal's 
you know, less Bible thumping Baptists, maybe some Methodists uh, and Congregationalists somehow equates to what the Constitution means in the Establishment Clause, and that's a major legal fraud where the judges who poll that should be shot. Um, and, uh, you know, the society in a larger picture needs to somehow come up with a better way of handling uh, being honest about those issues. Uh, yeah, and holding politicians and executives, you know, to the same standards, not just courts, but the courts have a primary interpretive responsibility, but a lot of them fail badly there. So you think that, to, just to make sure I get you, Loki, because I have a, um, a long track record of misunderstanding what you're saying, that um, <laughs> the judges in the courts are still tied up with God to, to over an overly large extent. Is that... Is that a proper understanding, or I'm sorry. Um, in, in in large part, yes. But if you understand establishment neutrality, which can be, you know, both religious equality among sects and not favoring religion or sectarianism over atheistic, non-theistic, humanistic, uh, you know, practices or beliefs, and then free exercise. How do you have free exercise? Uh, and uh, atheist or non-theistic or non-religious people in society, and yeah, you know, and interpret that in a way that delivers equal protections of law. Uh, it's, there, you know, we have some big messes there. I mean, I actually, uh, if you understand the constitutional law standards and look at how you know, the courts have acted, you know, we have major problems. It almost uh, presents it's, something. It's not, kind of paradoxical to me because you just set off a light bulb in my brain it might be a stupid light bulb though so let me know um is that like our like government foundation is based upon like th truths we hold self-evident right like maybe they're not expressly religious but they're essentially religious uh -huh. on the idea that we take them on as a uh, matter of faith no. we presuppose them and that's the basis of a lot of our laws, those same laws that constrain people who might not have completely different a priori assumptions, who might presuppose no, that. With natural rights. So it seems inevitable <laughs> that a country is going to favor some a priori moral assumptions over others. And I don't think you can get around that, which is why I always thought that nations should just be collections of people who share the same moral foundation. And then that's basically how you solve the problem of different moral foundations is you just... You just separate people. Um, well, but that, that, that's been done in the Mideast. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, fair. Point taken. Um, we have a new person in here. Neurotic Shrimp. I know you. You were, uh, active, you were active today on some of the text chats. Um, so I hope you still got some energy left in you. Because we're talking about, you know, the lightest of all subjects. The death of God in the Nietzschean sense. Um, is it real? And metaphorically speaking, is it real? And is it good or bad? And what are the ramifications for society? And then after you, I have some questions for the Admiral because he's been getting lively in the live text. So maybe we'll get to there. Uh, but first, Neurotic Shrimp, love to get your takes, man. Yeah, I haven't gotten feel for this conversation yet, but I mean, when Nietzsche talks about the death of God, it's outdatedness of religion and how people aren't per se religious anymore, but he sees it as people giving up on their own value structures mm -hmm. and what happens when you don't give into your own value structure and the problem that results as a society. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's my understanding of the I mean, God's dead. I think that's a pretty eloquent way of putting it, honestly. Um, yeah, that, that was really concise. That was awesome. Yeah. God, you should have heard me bluster like an idiot for like 30 seconds. I could have just said what you said. Oh, well. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not like easy to like articulate complicated ideas simply. Right. That's I think that's right. my forte. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's 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 true, huh? Anyway, um, I mean, yeah. I guess my question would be: Is do you? How do you guys think we're doing as far as trying to invent our own values and run societies without some objective moral standard that's getting crammed on on everyone else? Like we do it to a little bit, but do you guys think that uh, we're doing a good job trying to act out our own values, or do you think we're uh, worse off as a result of the uh, loss of God or something similar? Um, I'm gonna throw that. Yeah, over the thing is, yeah, David. Please. I think this question is really. 
very interesting because it's one of the few that are quick can actually use data to, to answer. So if we define that uh, that uh, doing good is reducing human suffering, which is something that many people can agree on, uh, we can see that uh, since the death of God or since rationality started to 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 be the the, the consensus in, in in many countries, we, we, we can see how how the countries with uh, that, that are that are that the belief the least thing of like there, there is data about it. For, for instance, uh, South Korea, uh, northern countries, uh, Japan, Canada, they they have uh, way lower rates of uh, homicides or violence, right? So. So even a, even a country as as a, that, that lacks this sort of a supernatural guidance for morality, they they they're doing pretty good. And, and since since we we started leaving religion behind in, in in many countries, we can see how 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 human suffering has been reduced not only through technology, but but also people have been able to to behave uh, more more acceptably. I would say so. And, and yeah. you can you can say how 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 in countries like I don't know where 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 for, for instance, some African tribes where 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 religion is like the most, or, or for instance, in in Iran or, or this uh, rather, rather like Muslim countries that they have the most uh, the highest rates of violence. For, for instance, in you can you can take take the the, the very blatant case of uh, for instance Mexico City or Iran and Tokyo, right? In Tokyo, you you have you don't see for, uh, any any Christian symbols or any religion symbols everywhere, whereas uh, in Iran or, or Mexico City, you see, oh, people are very, very convinced about the religion, and nonetheless, they they are doing quite badly in, in terms of uh, reducing human suffering. So we, I think we have we're doing a pretty good job without. Uh, so, so the question of if we are capable of replacing, uh, like a universal morality with our own, I think we're doing a pretty good job for 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 us. For, as I can tell, at least in the, in, in more re recent times, yeah, you, you can you can say that. Yeah. Yeah, religion definitely tries to uh, instill a moral structure, and it's not necessary for religion to be the only thing to this world. Nietzsche tried to make a really rational case to create a philosophical moral structure, and it kind of it kind of got twisted and perverted in the end. And that's kind of a funny motif that happens not just with religions, but it happened with Nietzsche's philosophy too. Sure. Yeah. Um, I I, Sorry. I, I put in just the last 10 seconds of uh, left text, I put parable for the madman, which is a parable by Nietzsche on the topic about his death. Uh, Benta, I kind of want to get your take on this. You said you, um, you're a world history teacher, did you say? I want to make sure I have that right. I actually teach a government in 12th grade, okay. but I, right. in preparing for it, I regularly I study world history. I'm not like sure. that well read, but some. <laughs> Well, I guess my question to you, this is something that Loki was talking about. It's something I kind of agree with. Like, we say that our moral systems are kind of independent from God now. Like, we have secular systems is the idea. But a lot of our governmental systems, like, even though we have the separation of church and state, fundamentally the morality of a lot of our laws and a lot of our government are based on religious presuppositions. And um, I was wondering if you thought that that's true. Um, or not, and I also want to see your thoughts on the general question of, are we doing a good job in the world of subjective morality, or if objective, some sort of objective transcendental morality is, like, necessary? So I was just kind of curious for your takes on all that. Sure. Um, yeah, no, let me, yeah. And I also want to be cognizant of my time. I don't want to, you know, too much on the mic. Uh, yeah, well, no. was the, can you do the first one again? Just to start, uh, I'll try to be concise. First one is basically, do you think that God is... God and religion are really out of our systems and institutions that we call secular, or is God still kind of sure. in there covertly and we just don't want to be explicit about it? Well, I think the search for the divine or the origin of the universe, whatever it might be, is something that we've done forever and we're always going to do. Um, when we say, you know, the individual God, I know a lot of us want to assume that, you know, we're talking about the Abrahamic God. And all you have to do is pick a different place on the earth to see that, you know, people follow, you know, polytheism and other systems as well. And you can go all day back and forth comparing about which is more, you know, which has less violence than else. But um, I... It's a really good question. Um, I think that there is an underlying... Oh, someone made a comment earlier about the evolution of our species. I forget 
who it was. Someone um, smart. I think it was, um, I don't remember either, but somebody smart. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have a, you know, a fundamental belief, at least for myself, that there is some kind of code to the universe. Um, we all understand, you know, being young and, you know, being hit or, you know, poked by another person just by two objects interacting. And if you want to call that science, if you want to call it literally the, the connection of, you know, two different um, entities and whatever it might be. Um, so in the society itself, I think there is an underlying point. I just don't know if it's directly coming from the pulpit anymore or the temple or the mosque or wherever else, because it, it seems as if it's pretty well understood that thou shalt not kill you know, a lot of historians want to claim it's like, oh, it's an Abrahamic thing. It's like it's actually had to go around a lot of the world, not just in Abrahamic places, because otherwise the places would have self-destructed many times over. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's my thought there. I think it's, you know, we have it there, but at the same time, I try to have faith that we do actually have the, the common sense that we want our children to have a future and thus, we have to give a shit about our neighbor's our neighbor's children, because we live in civilization, and it's very hard to go, you know, live off the land by yourself. So, I don't know if that was too abstract. No, it's or, perfect. But... It's perfect. I like it. Your takes, man. Um, I'm gonna. Ask and then the you second. One... Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, you're right. I did ask you more than one question. Um. The second question is basically, concise. do you think we're doing okay without a transcendental morality? Do you think we're doing okay trying to invent our own moralities and keep it subjective and keeping it secular? Do you think we're doing a good job? I guess would be the, would be the next question. Sure. So if you think about uh, world history and you think about the transition from hunter-gatherer to um, farming, you know, there was obviously probably a you know, a couple hundred, even thousand year transition there that was pretty brutal just because of the large, large, like change in human civilization. Um, I think we're dealing like with Nietzsche observed. I think we're dealing with that right now with religion. And I, I'd say, you know, some things were getting right and other stuff were, you know, I don't, I, I'm not positive. Um, I, you know, call me a, a bleeding heart liberal, but I think the revolution and whatnot in the 60s was a good thing. Um, I think that, you know, equality amongst all humans is, for me, is an absolute. Um, and so thus, I think we've moved towards that direction in some ways. But I also, you know, again, like I said, call me on the liberal side, but um, having taught in different cities around, I live in California, um, having taught around different cities and whatnot, I would say that Sometimes our society gets it right, and sometimes there's other points where we don't. You know, we we perpetuate things that really should not be perpetuated. Um, I, again, I don't remember who said it on the the drug policy. Um, you know, I, I I really wonder sometimes the nonviolent issue of drugs to prison and how that affects different populations. Um, you know, how it started, how how it's continuing, and if it's really producing the kind of society we want, or if it actually is making it worse um so yeah i think it depends on the topic um sure. i'm you know, I, i'm not gonna lie i used to be a pessimist um it was just i just kind of like saw the world to see like that the fact that power always corrupts and that we can't seem to just get money out of politics um which i think is essential uh, for an actual like democracy slash democratic form of republic to function. Um, so I guess it maybe depends on the topic to answer your question. Sorry, that was too many words. No, it's all right, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. your input. Uh, Zaber Fang is still gone, which is annoying because I want to ask something. I'll ask uh, the Sergeant uh, Kipling because he's pretty new. Um, so what do you, how do you think the world is doing in the aftermath of some sort of like agreed upon objective morality now that we're trying to you know create institutions and governments that are secular and we're trying to like subjectively create our own moralities how do you think the world is doing with that and do you think it'd be better if god wasn't uh so weak in today's culture uh 
uh, how do I think the world is doing after <laughs> the secularization? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, is, is that the question? That is, that is the question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I would say we're doing pretty rough. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll stick a nice little, uh, little image in the live chat there. Okay. All right. Uh, we're doing pretty rough. I'd say I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, fair. Okay. All right. Um, for anybody on YouTube who cannot see the live chat, this is why you need to join the Discord server so you can uh, view the live text chats and so you can participate and have lots of fun with me because I'm the main draw. Unfortunately, I have less people with face cams, which is very annoying. I also detect this uh, conversation winding down slightly. But we do have a new person here named the River Runner with a black screen. Um, I would like, I don't know if I've ever heard from you before, but I'd like to hear from you now. We're talking about Nietzsche and the death of God, metaphorically, if it happened, and if it's good or if it's bad. So uh, River Runner, please give us your take. If you're there. Seems like you are. Did you say, did you say what in the death of God? The death of God in the Nietzschean sense, the metaphorical sense. Oh, uh, I, if you I don't really know much about it, I'm kind of here just for getting information, seeing what people have to say. Sure, I, fair I really enough. Don't. Um, I'm not really informed about that. No worries. Uh, if you want to listen, that's fine. Uh, if you have anything you do want to say, please pipe up. And we've yeah. been going over a lot of stuff. So um, on YouTube, uh, on, at the Pang Burn Offensive, you can find this live and watch through if you want a more in-depth analysis because we're going to be winding down here in like 10 minutes. I, I have a few cents. Please. Uh, so so well, you, you touched on the idea of, of having a government that's secular and having that be separate from, from the religious sense. And I think that's important. I think that's definitely in the right transition because when you talk about what's the most important value, you don't want to conflate those religious people that are supposed to be lowly with the, the power that's like the strongest thing. And I think that when you're preaching, you kind of shouldn't be a leader, if that makes sense. And that's a dangerous thing to conflate when those two things happen at the same time. And it's not necessarily easy to have a preacher that is like lowly, because that's kind of counterintuitive. You want someone that's, you know, like knows a thing or two. And so those two, those happen, those blend, and that can be dangerous. So I think that having a secular, rational structure is a necessary thing that we have progressed well on. And you still have to have those services, I mean, religions, for lack of a better term, philosophers that are preaching. Right. I that's, that's a good and I think this is the critical point, and I think this is a Petersonian point that I really like, is that basically, if you don't keep the preachers and like the rationality institutions apart, and they come together, bad stuff happens. Basically, if you take the religious instinct out of the transcendent, where you're not supposed to be able to touch it, and if you remove the transcendent, the religious instinct has to go somewhere. And usually it goes to politics and government and our institutions that are supposed to be purely rational and uh, purely um, secular, so to speak. Um, so I think that's a good point. Um, we are, I'm going to pull the plug here pretty soon. So what we're going to do is how I end every one of these um, is basically 30 second hot takes um, of basically anything that you heard that was new that you want to focus on that you think is important or hopefully my greatest wish it's happened a couple times but not very much is if something changed your mind I want to hear it so we're going to go through the whole room we're going to go real quick I, I literally will time you for 30 seconds because I have stuff to do and I'm sure you guys are busy as well so 30 seconds uh, anything new that you want to talk about anything that changed your mind that and then that'll be it. So, are we ready? That's rhetorical. Um, I'm not gonna start with Benson just because I was just on you, but I will come back to you. Andy, you have been pretty quiet. So, Andy, we're gonna lead off with you, mate. Oh, nobody's ever uh, t said that to me before. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, a big theme related to this topic, the death of God, would be that uh, 
the connection to morality. Uh, and I, I would just like to say that I think it is a huge assumption to think that morality can only exist in relation to a god um, in an objective sense. Uh, I, I think that's assuming a really huge thing about someone being god who you've never met, most likely, or if you did, you don't remember. And <clears throat> I would say it's possible that they are not, well, I would say that they are not necessarily intertwined concepts. And it's kind of a big assumption we've placed. Uh, so we should forget about if it comes from God or not, and we should more focus on our own care about morals in general. And if we can't agree on if they're objective or not, uh, then so be it as long as we maintain that care. Okay. Uh, BG Killer, if you have anything you want to f finish with, anything burning, any uh, things that had your mind, any things you had your mind changed on, now's the time. Oh, Zombie Cleo just joined. Oh, no. Not Zombie Cleo. Zombie Killer Chick. Sorry. It's so sad. Only at the end. It's okay. We'll get to you. BG Killer? Uh, I don't really have anything to add. All right. Um, well, thank you for your honesty. Yeah. I love Thanks. having you. I'd love to see you again. The face cam is appreciated. Uh, I'm going to go to Zombie Killer because you haven't been here. Hello. We are talking about the Nietzschean metaphorical death of God, whether it actually happened and whether it was good or bad, whether it happened or not, and what the ramifications are for the world and for morality. And we are winding down to the end. This is the speed round. Everybody else is doing their 30-second summation of their, like, final burning mm -hmm. thoughts. You get to do a 30-second summation of all of your thoughts on the matter. So, um... It can be a lot quicker than that. <laughs> I don't really give a fuck. <gasps> <sighs> hurt my feelings. There you go. You hurt my feelings. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> it's okay. That's all right. Fair enough. Hey, that's that's a response. Uh, Nietzsche kind of predicted the advent of nihilism in the aftermath of the death of God. So thank you for being uh, displaying it in real time. I appreciate you. No problemo. Okay. <laughs> David Pixel, anything burning, anything you want to finish with, anything you had your mind changed on, on the off chance? Go ahead. Yeah, I think something that I, that I noticed from some few people here, especially from Sergeant Kipling, the, his last intervention, let's say. So how we, so when, when you ask how, how we're doing with a, with a, with our secular mor morality, well, I think uh, the, the the picture that he that he that he sent, I think that that's probably one of the clearest definitions of a, or the clearest showcase of a, of anecdotal evidence. I think, despite all, all the things we see in the news, which, which is true, I'm not saying it's not, but. Uh, but uh, if we look at the data uh, at large, which I'm gonna share on the on the on the live chat, I think I think we're doing a lot better than than people would have anticipated. I think you, you can look at the data, and especially when when we started ad adopting this uh, sort of uh, um, how you say rational morality, we, we started doing 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 better than, than before. So yeah. I think we shouldn't be so pessimistic about it. Maybe maybe it change, maybe we will be a little worse. But yeah. for now, I think you never know. Um... So what I would say to that is I shouldn't really respond, but I will because I have very low self-control when it comes to these things, um, is that when you're looking at world history, the amount of confounding variables are like technically infinite. So saying that it's because of the advent of rational morality, I don't think you can say that. But to your point, um, it is true that in the, de in the aftermath of the death of God, uh, global deaths and conflict haven't gotten like noticeably worse. So there's also that, I mean, you had the 20th century, which Nietzsche predicted, but after that, it's been pretty, it's been pretty chill to your point. So yeah, um, I think Sergeant's point, and this is a point that I share with him is basically if there is no, a, you know what, I'm going to say that for my hot take in the last 30 seconds. I don't want to, I don't want to stop on you, but, um, David, I don't thank you for participating. You were wonderful. Um, I, I'm just saying this because I think you were new. I'd love to see you back here again next Monday. So please. Um, Loki, 30 seconds burning. Any final thoughts that you didn't say or do you want to clarify anything? 
just so, last minute stuff. Two things. I, I didn't uh, directly address the stipulated question, and I think it's largely irrelevant because the meaning of God metaphors historically in Nietzsche's time were just so much different than society and cultural context today. Two, um, religion and rational or secular governance aren't necessarily opposed to each other. In a healthy society and system, they can supplement and augment human needs that aren't all rational and secular and rational policy issues that have different obligations. In an unhealthy society or with malicious actors, they may be at odds, but not in a healthy system. That's it. Thank you, Loki. Always uh, hyperverbal, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, neurotic Shrimp. Last burning, yeah, any my, burning things you want to shove in? Yeah, last burning thing is, I think the the God is dead, claim God is dead is like, I'm relating it to the parable of the madman. And like, how do you make the accusation to someone else that like, if, 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 if everyone has their own moral like values, you value something. And if that person isn't adhering to their own moral value, how do you make that claim to them? How do you make them know that? Right. And if you define God as the thing that you worship, as the thing that you value, that you work towards, and then someone shows up and says, like, you know, you like you're not fucking doing it. How do you get that through to someone? It's not a very easy thing to get through. And I think that's one of the things that Nietzsche is trying to contend with when he's trying to like to make these value structures. Because Nietzsche tried to really rationalize, philosophize a value structure that people could understand. Right. And that was Nietzsche's way to try to fix that. I almost think it's a difference of honesty, right? Because everybody has some sort of a priori assumed moral foundation. Everybody has one. Religious people call it God and say they're operating on faith and say everyone should believe in it that they don't have to, um, but they should. And then some people they, say... They kind that, of, yeah, they, they, yeah, the religious people may make the mistake of passing the responsibility on and externalizing it. And I think that's a... It's... it's not it's less i'm gonna say i'm gonna use the word less dangerous in a way because you're kind of making yourself worse and i think that's a mistake that exists but it's a kind of a dumb it's like dumbing them down in a way sure. and it's making them not violent by 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 because they externalize it and they don't internalize it and they're being lazy that's it, it, it kind of seems to work but it's not like optimal okay Ross, if you actually have, like i'm sorry towards it Okay, sorry, shrimp. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a big problem. <laughs> yes, it it's is rather clear. large. Uh, shrimp, not shrimp. Uh, Roski burning stuff. Why is everybody coming in at the end? This is so sad. Where were you guys like? There's a yeah, like, Let's keep it running. Last burning stuff. Um, Thirty seconds, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I just say that we are what we value. Not meaning that we are what we want to be, but what we act out. And so with Nietzsche saying God is dead, it is truly a tragedy for us as a species. Yeah. Uh, I like the take. Uh, thank you for being succinct. I appreciate you. Richard, a.k.a. Zurich. Um, we're winding down. So basically 30 seconds for you to give me my, your take on the metaphorical death of God in the Nietzschean sense. The end of moral and cultural agreement and binding to the transcendental moral ideal known as God. Did that happen? Or was Nietzsche just crying wolf? And is it good or bad? And what ramifications does it have? Speed run this, please. Give me your quick take. Yeah, yeah I think Nietzsche, what Nietzsche was prophesying was the continuance of a cycle. Because how this goes is that Conception God needs to die and then needs to get resurrected. And so that well that's not all he was doing. I don't want to trivialize it, but our understanding of God needed to die. So it happened, it will happen, but God will come back. God you, you think he'll come back. You think that's interesting. Oh yeah. You think so? Maybe it will. Maybe. That'd be a hell of a thing. That's an awesome take. I like that a lot. It's well said. I, I might actually agree, too. My kind of God. 
It might actually. Yes. Oh man! I, like I might actually oh, I agree. Go on for hours about that. Like this post God world where like the subject is maybe the chaos just gets so bad that all of a sudden we just flip back into the yeah that might happen. Interesting take. Thank you. Uh, Pangburn has told me privately that he does not want to respond because we're best friends. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but he's not gonna um, add anything. So all we have is Sergeant. Um, I saved you for last just because you were the last one to kind of like go on a tangent. So, um, sorry, Benson, did you want to say something? You can go after. I was going to do a 30 second. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about it. I forgot about you. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you can go after. Uh, Sergeant, uh, just 30 second take. Anything burning you want to talk about? Death of God, anything you had your mind changed on? Just, you know, quick hot takes. Anything uh, you want to finish with? Not really. I mean, I feel like, uh, I didn't really elaborate earlier and think, you know, depression is rampant in society. I think people are kind of feel uh, like they have no drive, no purpose. I would argue that that's uh, correlated greatly to, you know, belief in God, moral purpose. Uh, so I guess, I guess that would be my take on this discussion is that it is a bad thing. It's not bad that Nietzsche said it. Um, I guess that was like an observational thing he was saying, right? But uh, right. overall, for society, I would say it has been a net negative. Sure. Oh, Thank I you. love you, Sergeant. Yeah, Rofsky and Sergeant, you guys need to get a room or something. I don't know what to tell you. I love you, too. <laughs> that that is home. awesome, man. Yeah, it's the meaning crisis. That's the what mean, it is. The meaning crisis. That, you... God, that would have been a better title, wouldn't have it. Wouldn't have it. It would have been a better title. Maybe we'll do a show on the meaning crisis. Uh, Vivek, you just came in. 30 seconds. Metaphorical death of God. Was it good or bad? Did it happen? Go. Oh, I, I, I think Nietzsche's um, la, uh, the line, uh, God is dead, dead and we have freedom. I, 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 I go with the Wikipedia meaning of uh, that metaphor uh, in the sense Enlightenment and scientific revolution has uh, made it impossible for God to exist in some sense. Okay. And uh, that is what I think, like, uh, Nietzsche actually meant. And uh, as scientific uh, revolution, this new age of enlightenment uh, continues, I don't think it's possible for any moral, like, our moral standards to manifest into any kind of transit transcendental being anymore so i i think god is god is dead and no there won't be any deification anymore okay there, there won't be any deification of moral standards anymore okay thank you yeah that's what i believe in it's the it's the rational form of that uh, of the statement all right well thank you for your input i'd love to see you earlier on in the show next monday so i can hear more from you all right, Benson, 30 second. Anything burning you want to talk about? Dang, there's a lot of smart people in here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that, you know, I might agree a little bit with what, um, with what Richard said about, you know, uh, things changing over time. I don't know if we'll go back to, you know, the traditional sense that we, you know, potentially had before, if it reemerges in a new way, it's definitely not good if it's money or materialism, because, you know, we live on a finite system. Again, not to sound like a hippie, but, you know, we have to live with the earth and not on it. And I think just one other point, like I said before, um, you know, a moral that I think is as near objective as possible, like, like I said, is um, if you have children, you know, treating them the best you can to create the world you want, um, through action, through good action, um, and seeing your neighbor's children just as yours as well, because, you know, like, um, somebody values them as much as you value yours. So, sure, that's it. Don't don't say you don't want to sound like a hippie, because you can't escape that. That's a very hippie statement. You just have to own it. Don't don't try to escape it. It's okay. There's a hip, little bit of hippie it's in big, all of us. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of hippie in all of us. Don't try to... Yeah, because you definitely sound like one. So don't don't try to pretend like you, don't try to pretend like you can get away from that. Okay, um, thank you everybody. This was a wonderful discussion. A uh, great way to come back after uh, Christmas and the holidays. Um, 
so I don't really have anything else other than the normal plugs. Um, please go to YouTube, like, share, and subscribe, turn on the bell, all that good stuff, because conversations like this don't exist anymore, really, especially not on the internet. We want to make these as popular as I can. Free and fair discourse matters. War of ideas is important. Um, and Pank Marin's a pretty good guy to do it. And I love this uh, platform. For anybody already on YouTube, uh, you can watch the whole live if you want. You can scroll back. It will be on the channel. Please join the Discord server if you want to interact with these live shows. And we have uh, text channels each and every day popping off with all of the uh, most interesting things happening in the world. And you can say whatever you want and you will get challenged. And believe me, you will get challenged. Um, last thing I was asked to plug is that uh, Travis Pangburn is um, doing a tour with some famous scientists in the near future. Um, tour information is at pang-burn.com slash tickets. They start going on scale on January 22nd. Um, there's lots of art around. Look through the channel if you want to find that, if you want to attend some of these events, promoting more free and fair discourse. So with that, I don't really have anything other to say than I believe that needs a brilliant to... job, John. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so Great much, Trav. Stuff, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you for participating. It's wonderful. I'll have to come up with an Let's equally meet down in the tab. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. All right. So everybody on Discord, go down to the um, tavern. It's a uh, not live channel that's a bit more fast and loose. That's why it's called the tavern. Feel free to get into some bar fights. Um, I'm going to be going off the live pretty soon. Um, so that's that. Thank you all for coming. Peace.